Okay, so so last time around, um, we said we had a coffee machine which is calibrated to dispense 80.23 milliliters of coffee per cup, and we wanted to test the hypothesis that whether this is dispensing more than the calibrated value, because this was problematic to us if it's disp if it dispenses more. So, um, because you're doling out free coffee, free milliliters of coffee to everybody, then the calibrated value. So we set that up as our alternative hypothesis, whether the average value is greater than 80.23, and we set the null hypothesis as the base case, the calibrated 80.23 value. And for that, we computed a test statistic on the sample mean. So we obtained a sample mean uh, out of 100 cups, and that turned out to be 82 uh, milliliters of uh, coffee. Now, should we be worried? Is 82 significant? This is what we set out to check. And for that, we had a test statistic computed for this particular value. Turned out to be a 3.54 z-value, which translated to a p-value on a normal distribution as 0 0.002. And then we interpreted what this really means. What does 0 0.002 really mean? Uh, this is the likelihood of 82 being a coincidence, and since this is a very small probability, very small value, which means this is not a coincidence, this is something we should be worried about. This is not a one-off value, 82. This is a, this has a very low likelihood of being a one-off chance, so we should be worried. This is, in fact, what's going on, which is why we gave credibility to the alternative hypothesis, and we rejected the null hypothesis. Remember, the key observation here was um, we have this entire thing running under the assumption that the null hypothesis is the truth. Okay, so with this assumption, when we came across an 82 sample mean, we uh, should be worried that the probability of this being a coincidence is so low that this is in fact what's going on, which is why we give weightage to the alternative hypothesis and we concluded that we reject the null hypothesis. So this is what we did last time around. But what we're really interested in today is uh, putting a number uh, further on this p-value. Uh, OK, this is 0 0.002 as a probability. It's a small area. But how small should it be? Or how uh, big should it be? Right. So it, it boils down to this. Look, this is the original uh, area, original figure. It's possible you could get an even smaller probability. It's possible you could get a larger uh, probability. And what would that mean? What would that mean? Having a smaller probability, a smaller likelihood for the test statistic here to be a coincidence or having a greater likelihood for the test statistic to be a coincidence. What does that mean? Well, it really means that if this is a small likelihood, if this is a small probability that it's a coincidence, then it's not a coincidence, right? A small likelihood of it being a coincidence, which means it's not a coincidence, so you should be worried. But if this has a higher area, if this has a higher area right here, if this is a greater probability, if this is more likely to be a coincidence, then you shouldn't really be worried. Then you should not be rejecting the null hypothesis, right? So this is what it translates to. But then, but then the question is, at what point do you draw a line? At what point do you separate a low likelihood of test statistic being a coincidence or a high likelihood of this test, test, test statistic being a coincidence. So where do you draw the line? Uh, so we quite literally uh, draw the line on this curve by saying we're going to define a threshold. Okay, so this is our original curve and we call that threshold as the significance level we refer to this as alpha. So we could, in fact, go ahead and define this particular value as uh, alpha. And then we could say that, look, this z, uh, this z value, let me just call this as z alpha, because the area under this curve is, in fact, alpha. OK? So and this is what we, and this is what we are looking to, to check whether or not our probability is less than a threshold probability, a threshold level, okay? Typically, we set this out to, we set alpha to uh, 0 0.05, as in 5%, and 
this is what um, this is the threshold this is what helps us make a conclusive decision um, because we cannot just uh, take one particular value to be so small and one, another value to be too large we actually compare it to a standard uh, value which we define ourselves uh, before the start of the experiment so in our case in our case um, if we set it out to 0 0.05 and we see that the likelihood that our observation of 82 sample mean was a coincidence well it was less than alpha therefore it was not a coincidence and so we could reject the null hypothesis so in conclusion what we could say is that if our p-value is less than alpha then we can reject the null hypothesis H naught. So that is the conclusion that we get to. Yes, we rejected the null hypothesis in the in the last uh, video too, but now we have a means, a mechanism, a formal definition, a formal decision rule that we could use to formally reject the null hypothesis and claim that the null hypothesis is not valid and the phenomenon that we're observing is dominated by the alternative hypothesis therefore we can reject the null hypothesis